We've seen in the circular flow that the consumption by households is a function of the income that they receive from firms. The income that they receive, they spend, the additional income induces an additional spending, and that is given by the most propensity to consume. And we also said that consumption by households also have an autonomous part. Now let's put some values to this. Let's assume the autonomous part equals 100, and the induced part, the multiple propensity consume is comma 8, comma 8 y. What does that mean? If income increased by one rand, we're going to spend comma 8 of that, in other words, 80 cent. Or we say, if there's an increase in income of, say, 200, we spend comma 8 of this, in other words, spending will increase by 160. We can also show it graphically. The relationship between consumption and income. The autonomous part, that is part of consumption that takes place, independent, autonomous from income. Even though income is zero, certain amount of consumption will take place. In our example, autonomous spending equals 100. Then if there's an increase in income, will lead, it will induce an increase in consumption. In other words, in our example, if income increase with 200, it will lead to an increase in consumption of 160. So, autonomous part, intercept on the vertical axis, the induced part, the slope of the curve is given by the mass of propensity consumed, comma 8. If there's an increase of 200 in income, it leads to an increase in consumption from this level to this level. In other words, by 160.